Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture, and I'm joined right now by Justin Funk of Agri Studies. Together, we are Real Agri Studies, and today we're talking to you, the respondents of our latest survey that we sent out in December. We asked you for your perspectives on producer organizations, and today we're going to give you some of those high-level results that uh, Justin has put together, and we're going to provide some analysis to it and uh, really uh, looking forward to it. So, Justin, let's dig in here and find out what producers had to say. Yeah, you bet. So, uh, you know, uh, in approaching this study, we we recognized that uh, there are, first of all, a lot of different producer organizations that are out there, and they are all uh, one way or another trying to create value for members. And so we wanted to better understand uh, what farmers' perspectives were on these producer organizations in terms of how they feel they're serving their membership and achieving their objectives. So we put together a survey. It was a, a one of the more, I'd say, complicated surveys that we've done. There were a lot of questions in this one, um, but because it's such a, a multi-dimensional topic, we wanted to make sure we covered as much as we could. We fielded the study in December uh, of 2023. We kept the window open for this one a little longer than we normally do just to accommodate the holidays and and things like that. Uh, but in the end, we had wonderful engagement from you, our panel. Uh, 715 farmers completed the survey. And whenever we get a sample of that size, it uh, it puts us in a degree of accuracy b b right around 4%, plus or minus 4%. And so, you know, when we look at these aggregated numbers, we can say that this is fairly representative of the Canadian farming population. So with that, uh, let's jump into some of the results, Sean. Um, the very first question that we asked was related to uh, the experience that you had with producer organizations. And we wanted to get a sense as to, well, your overall evaluation uh, of, of these producer organizations, um, your uh, activity with respect to membership or association, uh, the degree to which you have served as a delegate or a director for these organizations, and whether you've ever withdrawn membership from a non-voluntary or checkoff organization. So the very first question was related to your overall uh, feelings of effectiveness. And, and recognizing this was maybe a, a difficult question to answer because we're, we're lumping all of the producer groups in one, but we wanted to get a sense as to just how you felt in general about these organizations. So what our conclusion was is that 12% of you said that they are all excellent. So wonderful experience across the board. 70% said some are better than others. And then 18% said most are not very effective. And so th this really kind of shows where, where you're at in your feelings towards uh, these produce organizations in general. Yeah, so what I would suggest is that, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it, the, the the majority there being at 70%, um, I'm not, I, I don't think it's really a surprise. I, I think, you know, if, if you were to ask me, I think there are some that are better than than others that, you know, the fact that 12% feel that they're all excellent, um, that's a pretty happy group. Um, uh, the same with the fact that 18% saying most are not very effective, also a uh, pretty negative group there. So, uh, you know, I, I think from this, we can say that I, I think the majority of people definitely agree that, you know, there is overall, there is a bit of a tiering going on here. We didn't ask people to say, you know, who do you think is the most effective and who's the least effective and, and point out specific farm organizations. But uh, I, I think overall, uh, in the farm organizations themselves would say that there's always room for improvement. And, and we're going to look at some of the gaps where producers think there is room for improvement and for some of that feedback. Yeah, and that's really the most important question is, is identifying where, where are those gaps and, and how they could be filled. You know, I, I, I haven't run the numbers on this yet, and, and I can, but my assumption would be that um, that 70% you know, looking at some are better than others would somewhat be reflective too of the number of different producer organizations that one belong to. Yeah. So that that's uh, that's another question that we ask. And so we phrase this two ways, one with respect to how many different non-voluntary or checkoff producer organizations do you belong to versus voluntary. And so uh, the conclusions here, I, I, I don't think are overly surprising, um, but with respect to non-voluntary, 11% 
said they participated in none. The majority here was one to three, and then you see four to six, and very few, really just a sliver, was in more than six of these non-voluntary organizations. Compare that to different voluntary producer organizations, 32% um, said none, but then you've got this large, large group of one to three. So one to three seems to be uh, the bulk of respondents. And here I, I did actually cross-reference the numbers and if you participated in one to three non-voluntary, there was a high likelihood that you also participated in one to three voluntary. So there was a bit of a relationship there. So, you know, you, you, you look at that and, you know, the, the, uh, the average farmer, if you will, is participating in anywhere between, uh, two and, uh, six different organizations, whether they're voluntary or non. And so, you know, when you have that, that breadth of experience, I think it's likely that some of those experiences are going to be better than others, as reflected in the previous question. Yeah, and this gets to the point of people asking, you know, do, do we need this many farm groups? It is one of the things that is uh, commonly put out there in, in the ether. Um, and, and I think also, you know, and, and when we really, this is the high level results, but when we dig into some of the, you know, really, really in the meat sort of stuff, uh, we're, we're going to find that a lot of people, like you said, are, there's a lot of common membership in, in, in some of these. So if you're, if you are growing, if you're farming in Saskatchewan, you're growing wheat and canola and flax and pulses, um, which is, you know, a, a pretty standard kind of common four crop rotation in a province like that. Uh, and probably a few more crops as well, up to words of, of six, there's a over, lot of overlap amongst some of those some of those producers, um, and of course, uh, in, in the case of the non-voluntary, like we pointed out here, those are the checkoff organizations where the voluntary are more like the membership sort of group. So, uh, just to give examples, like membership being, you know, I'm a member of APAS, or I'm a member of the Western Wheat Growers, or I'm a member of Saskatchewan Stock Growers. Those are members versus like you know Saskatchewan B for or something like that, which is a checkoff org. So it's, uh, th there's, and, and I think that's where some of the confusion is created is people get mixed up because there's, there is a lot of different options out there on who you, who is going to represent your interests or the, your commodity. There, there becomes a lot of confusion out there, which is why we see in that previous slide, 70% of people saying, yeah, some are better than others. Yeah. So it, on that then, you know, an, another sort of measurement uh, is looking at engagement. And so we ask a number of questions related to engagement with these different organizations. And the first one was, uh, have you ever attended a regional or provincial meeting for producer organization within the last two years? So we kept this to a two year time frame and 61 percent indicated that they had 38 uh, percent said no they hadn't and one percent wasn't quite sure which is a totally fair response i mean asking somebody to go back over the last two years and accurately answer the question may be challenging and so but this kind of gives you an, an idea of what the degree to which people are participating in these meetings or events yeah and we and we lumped in here regional and you know the the agm so you know i i think if we if we were to separate those two, it would make sense that you know the majority of that sixty one percent yes are talking about attending a regional meeting, and we're kind of at that time of the year where a lot of district and regional meetings are happening uh, across the country in in many of the different checkoff organization areas, um, and that, that those are local, right? You'd have to travel not as far. Um, whereas the, the AGM is kind of one spot and it may be a little bit inconvenient for you. Now, some of what's, what's interesting too, is that a lot of the organizations have developed virtual models. Uh, I was in, you know, last, uh, the, the second week of January, I attended the Saskatchewan crop AGMs, um, and I attended them virtually because I, I couldn't make it to Saskatoon on, on, on that day. So trying to make it as easy as possible for that 61% number to get as high as possible. More engagement means that your voice is 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 really really being heard. So uh so we we then ask about uh involvement. And so uh, one of the questions related to serving as a delegate or a director of a producer organization and uh uh the the result came back saying that 40% 
had served as a director or a delegate. And, and this question was not, there was no time frame uh, associated with this. This this was ever. Uh, and then 60% indicated that they had not. And I know that you were maybe a little surprised about this particular result. Yeah, I, I, I'm. this is one of the questions where I, I'm the 40% yes um, does, that my reaction has been that it's high. Um, I, I'm wondering, I, and I, the results are the results, but I'm just wondering if some respondents skipped over the word served and just saw a delegate. And then, you know, we can, if we just have delegate alone, it potentially, um, has different definitions to different people. Uh, so, but yeah, it, it, sh it, based on this result at face value, it, it does show that a, a great portion of the people that, that answered this survey are people that are um, involved. And, you know, that if you look back to the prior slide where we have, you know, 61 or 60% of people saying that they've attended in the last two years, uh, this slide's ever, but, you know, in the last two years have attended uh, one of the regional or the AGM meetings, it shows that this is a pretty highly engaged group. So remember that when we get to the importance versus satisfaction, because this is not a group that, um, this is a group that cares because they look to be highly engaged based on these last couple data points. Yeah, that, that that's a great point. And that's sort of my, my, uh, my takeaway as well. Um, one more uh, chart on this slide. We we also ask about uh, withdrawing voluntary checkoff uh, or, or or membership, and uh, I, I'm not sure what your. I, I really don't know uh, enough about this to think if this is high or low. But 20% said that yes, they had, uh, and 80% indicated that they had not. Yeah, and and based on the fact that you know, I I had a couple of producers say to me, hey. I wish you would have asked, uh, you know, I request a check off, a refund on my check off with um, one of the organizations, but not another. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wish you would have asked that. Um, the, the reality is, is I, I think this is I think this is highly, you know, so there's going to be people that do that. There's going to be people that ask for no refunds. There's going to be people that ask for all of the refunds. Um, this is just have you ever withdrawn uh, checkoff. You know, I, I think a lot of producer organizations are concerned about this when they, you know, in, in the case of like, uh, there are some checkoff organizations where you can't get a refund. Um, and, and many of them, there is a refundable checkoff and it, it, the, it's meant to keep the organization accountable. If you do what you say you're going to do, and I feel you're representing me, I'm going to leave my money in. Um, so th this is this is one of the questions I think that is very much on the minds of a lot of producer organizations going into the future um, when there is, you know, because this creates budget pressure and this creates uncertainty from a revenue standpoint. Remember, the, the revenue for a checkoff or for a producer organization is membership or the checkoff fee, uh, the levy. So uh, I, I, I think this kind of falls right in line with what I thought it would be because um, it's covering all the organizations. So, you know, what, what you're suggesting is that I'm more maybe more inclined to withdraw membership if I'm dissatisfied yeah. with the organization. Yeah. Um, and so that's another layer of questioning that we wanted to look at here. Now, I, I have not yet run the numbers to look at this. This can get very complicated, but somebody who has withdrawn a membership versus where they see some of these gaps in satisfaction, but that would be an interesting thing to look at. Yeah. But, but, but here, here is overall how producers feel about the different uh, avenues, I guess, of, uh, of, of membership or association and how we position this was, and I, I love doing it this way. We, we asked people two questions. We presented them with these, these different uh, characteristics or activities. And then we asked two questions. One was to rate your degree of importance. So how important are these to you? You know, so how important is it that an organization represents my interest or has a positive relationship with government and so on and so forth. But then after those questions were answered on a, on a rating scale to then go in and ask, presenting the same characteristics or activities and asking essentially to what degree are you satisfied with producer organizations living up to these expectations? And so that creates uh, a gap uh, or it could be a surplus, but it's the difference between uh, importance and satisfaction that shows us where, where attention perhaps needs to be paid. 
So let's uh, let's start by taking a look at at some of these. Um, first of all, the 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 organization represents my interest. Well, well, first of all, th this is important. They're all important. I mean, on a scale of one to five. I mean, you know, I think our conclusion is these all fall into the category of important, which does not surprise me one single bit. It's important that an organization represents my interest and has a positive relationship with the government. They're willing to take strong positions against the government when necessary. They actively communicate with members. They allow members an opportunity to provide their opinions and feedback on experiences as a member. They're committed to extension and knowledge transfer. They allocate dollars to fund research and development, and they have a long-term vision for the sector they represent. Sean, does it surprise you that all these are considered important? Uh, no, they are all important. Um, what is interesting is it would be fun in the future to look at how people rated these satisfactions and, um, relative to voluntary versus non-voluntary organizations. Um, what sticks out to me is and let, let's just for a second think about um, the non-voluntary. Those are the checkoff organizations. And on the crop side, you know, a big part of their reason for being is funding research and development. Mm -hmm. That's actually um, the lowest rating here. So it'd be, that's why I'm saying it would be interesting to look at that voluntary versus non-voluntary. Um, and the highest rating, you know, you're correct. I think that it's not surprising all of them are important. What's interesting is the differences between some of these and, mm -hmm. and the fact that they are willing to take strong positions against the government when necessary. So, you know, stick up for the industry when government is trying to do something that is wrong. And I, I think um, I, I'm going to make the assumption that a lot of people, when they read this, they're thinking about the federal government. We've had a lot of issues between the federal government currently on the environmental and sustainability file versus what farmers think is, is or the bulk of farmers think is the best, that received the highest rating. Um, if you were to probably ask farm groups, you know, what are the reasons for our being? Um, I don't think in the top five would be, you know, one of the reasons we're here is to stick up against government. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that's on the, on the play sheet. Um, but uh, in, a, in a provincial level, it's, it's also difficult because you know you're you're doing a, you're working a, a lot collaborative collaboratively within the province with those provincial governments it can be very difficult and there's some political sensitivities to being a rebel rouser with the with the provincial government when you are a provincial checkoff organization so um it's I, i'm i'm interested to see what the satisfaction is because um i think how these sort of ranked even though they are all high how they sort of ranked out is is, is kind of a shows that I think what uh, the objectives are of the producer orgs versus what some producers want to see are are somewhat different. Like if you told me on the membership organized, like the voluntary organizations, that the you know the most important thing is that they stick up, take strong positions against the government, that would totally make sense to me. It doesn't totally make sense, I think, when you think about some of the non voluntary. Right. Well, with respect to satisfaction here, I'm just going to uh, advance in here and show you, you know, I, I think without looking at any of the details, you know, clearly we can see right out of the gate that there are gaps. Yeah. So the importance are all in the fours and the satisfaction are all in the threes. And this is a little hard to to interpret looking at it this way. So I'm just going to change the way we look at this slide here. And I'm actually going to show you the relative size of the gaps so here, here you have the exact same statements on the right-hand side now, and you'll notice that now the, the orientation of the slide is looking in a different direction. This is showing us where the gaps are. So represent organi organization represents my interest has almost an entire point gap. Uh, they have a positive relationship with the government, half a point worth of gap. So, you know, you would look at that and say that they're meeting that need a little bit better. Uh, you take a look at the willingness to take strong positions. Here you see uh, over an entire point's worth of gap. So there's clearly dissatisfaction or or something that needs to be dealt with there. Uh, and as we continue on and you see, you can, you can identify where the biggest gaps are. And so I think that th there's a lot of power in this particular chart, because not only does it show that there is a gap, but it, you know, it shows the size of the gap. And if something's really important, 
and somebody is not, you know, receiving satisfaction on that, then th that's that's something that needs to be addressed, perhaps one way or the other. Yep. Um, and you know, I like I said, uh, you know, one of the main functions of uh, some of the provincial checkoff organizations is to allocate dollars to fund research and development. You know, that's one of the lowest gaps. I, I think that's a real positive. Um, there's a gap there, but you know, maybe it's the kind of research or maybe it's the amount of dollars, you know, we, we, we you can make some inferences there, but, um, that's the smallest gap. So I, I think that, that, that is a, you know, I'll take that as a, as a positive once again, back to the, are willing to take strong positions against the government when necessary over a point difference here. Uh, that would, you know, lead you to believe that I think farmers want to see, uh, or, you know, producer organizations as a whole be more vocal when, you know, less conciliatory, less amicable and, and more, you know, um, noisy and loud and, 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 and make, you know, the, their words heard when it comes to taking a strong stand against the government, provincially or federally, I think we'll just assume it's it's both, uh, when there's policies that are against what, what, what farmers would define as against their industry. That, that's, that's a clear take home here. Um, how they do that, that's a whole, that's, that's for executive directors to figure out, but uh, that's a pretty clear message here, I, I, I think. Um, yeah, the other, you know, the other big gap, the other two big gaps here, or I guess we should say three, the the organization represents my interests um that kind of ties to the stick up to the government um in, in in some ways um they allow members an opportunity to provide their opinions and feedback on their ex experience as a member um this is one where there's a disc I, I you know i think there's a disconnect um and and why i'm going to make that assumption or i'll explain myself is that there's a lot of ways to provide feedback to to organizations. There's phone. There's obviously letters to the board, showing up at a regional meeting, showing up, uh, of course, at the AGM. I watched a couple AGMs or one in particular last week in Saskatchewan where you know people let their feedback be known. It was a very contentious, uh, respectful debate about a particular issue. So um, again, this would be we should uh, remember to look at this this question on the feedback and compare that to how people felt whether they had attended a meeting or hadn't attended a meeting ah, great um, point yeah that that's that that's that's a good one so i there's a gap there either people don't think they're being heard and they just say there's not there's no place for me to provide my opinion and feedback or they don't know because you know i i'll i'll defend some of the producer organizations i think there's a lot of ways to provide feedback and and opinions now it's whether you're being heard is a is a is another um you know based on your individual situation and and the last one they have long term vision for the sector they represent interesting that that is one of the larger gaps um that that's uh, I'm going to be really taking leaps if I try to explain that. So maybe I'll just hold back on that. But the, the, uh, if I was to guess prior to you showing me this, I wouldn't think that that would be one of the the large, almost a point difference. So I, I that that's one need to look deeper into here to try to try to find out what uh, that gap is is all about because th that would that's also uh, a little bit concerning uh, as well because that's you know farmers saying that. I'm not really sure that what you see as the future and what I see as the future are necessarily the, the mm -hmm. same. There could be some things wrapped up in that, like sustainability, as an example. It's a very controversial file, um, but uh, that that one kind of sticks out to me too. Um, it, it, it's also the second most important factor from the previous slide. So you know that that's one that. Uh, you know, I think we need to look into a little bit more. You know, one of the things, though, you know, re related to your points earlier, the glue that kind of holds all of this together is the statement on they actively communicate with members. You know, th there's dissatisfaction on that one. And so that could be with respect to what they communicate or how they communicate or when they communicate. Um, but but that's that's probably something that should be looked into uh, a little bit as as well. Yeah. And, you know, something I didn't mention earlier that I forgot about is it, it's really a, you know, it, it's a two way street. OK, if we look at, you know, to, 
one way to provide your opinion and feedback is who gets elected to the board um, in, in many of these situations, okay? Um, and to you know, give you an idea, um, when it comes to some of the checkoff organizations, we're seeing a voter turnout, and then and, you know some are going to say, "Hey, ours is higher. That's fine," but you know somewhere between four and eight percent, I'm going to say ballpark, of people are turning out to vote for for the elections. Mm -hmm. So everybody is sent a ballot. Everybody has the ability to participate. That's farmers choosing not to participate. Um, so that's one way to provide your feedback is, is who is elected to, to the board. So as you can see, I, I am not surprised there are gaps in this whole area. It's the next step is, you know, how, how do we close these, um, so that these gaps don't exist? There's always gonna be gaps. Um, it's too bad. There's not some positives here, like where it's, Hey, they're actually ahead of where the expectation is. Um, I, I'm not, you know, that, that would, that would have been nice to see, but here's the reality. There's, there's some work to be done. So, um, that kind of leads into the next, uh, area of, of, of questioning, which is the, the different areas of focus that these producer organizations are, uh, allocating resources towards. And, and so, what what we did is we presented a series of different, I, I call them areas of focus. And, and so they include things like business risk management, trade and market access, R&D, extension and knowledge transfer, taxes, access to input, succession and labor. And, and then simply ask, do, do you feel that producer organizations are putting too much focus, not enough focus, or just the right amount of focus on these particular areas? Yeah. So how, how, how? I, I got question regret. How did we not? Oh. How did we not conclude or include sustainability? Um, that's 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 on me. So I, I well, wish Maybe probably because we couldn't define it. <laughs> well, there you go. We we learned that before too in a survey. Yeah. So go ahead. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, so here I'm going to show you this chart. Looks a little different than some of the others. So uh, moving from left to right is showing. Uh, not enough attention, just the right amount of attention, and then too much attention. So I'm just going to kind of go through each one of these. Not, I don't think we need to pay too close attention to the numbers yet, but business risk management, you know, not enough attention and just the right amount of attention, pretty much equally split there. Uh, trade market access, a little more emphasis on not enough attention. Research and development, pretty much the right amount of attention. Extension, right amount. Taxes, could maybe use a little bit more attention. Access to inputs, evenly split. Um, succession, right amount of emphasis. And and labor, right amount of emphasis. So, I mean, I, you know, if you look at 50% or more saying the right amount of attention, then I think we we take away that that's, that's a positive. That's, mm -hmm. you know, maintain, sustain, if you will. Um, so I just want to circle the ones here where it appears that, there isn't enough, quite enough attention, and uh, it's in these areas here: business risk management, trade and market access, taxes, and access to input. You know, and it's interesting just looking at these. A lot of these, a lot of these have financial consequences to them, and so they affect the bottom line to a certain degree. So I, I don't know if that's a theme necessarily. And these numbers aren't overwhelming. I mean, I, I think that you look at these and you take it with a grain of salt. Uh, one conclusion is that. There's no particular area where there's too much attention. Um, so really, it's a toss up now between, yep, yeah, we're doing this right, or we could use a little bit more. Well, I think at a right field there, the one that stuck out to me that is encircled is succession. You know, 19% of people saying too much attention to succession and transition. Um, mm -hmm. all right. Again, I wouldn't have guessed that that would be the highest of all the other, you know, compared to all the rest of them. Um, you, you're right. There's a lot of other other groups that are focusing on that too, as part of their their mo and their mandate. Yeah, like it's not that it's not important. It's the fact that not quite sure it's you know what what I want from from you, right? As the yeah. as the producer organization, um, and 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 you know when we dig into this data further, when we can look at you know based on you know what beef people believe here versus what people that are growing pulses and wheat or corn and beans think. Um, is going to produce some interesting results here as well. Remember, these are the overall 
uh, how people how people people see this. Um, I think what's encouraging is that there's a lot of producer groups where research and development, like I mentioned, um, and you know, I think it's a very positive result. Fifty three percent saying, "Hey, just the, the right amount um, of, of of focus in in that area." Um, so yeah, it's um, access to inputs. You know, probably some producer groups are going to see this and be like, "Well, we have nothing to do with that." Um, so there, but again, that's perception versus what the stakeholder's responsibility is. And so that, that comes down to communication again. Right. Um, so, uh, and, and trade, uh, will always be for sure for the exportable commodities, which makes up a significant portion of the producer groups in the, in the country trade and market access will, you know, I'm not surprised that that's one of the higher, needs more attention right because it, it, i'm not never sure it could receive enough attention right yeah good point like will, will we ever see a different result to the to some of these uh maybe yeah. not yeah. yeah and hey with, with the doll you know with, with some of these financial matters and some of the variables that producers are dealing with uh on a daily basis and you know trying to hold their margin and you know trying to have that long-term financial sustainability uh, and viability, uh, business risk management. I, I think it's it, it's well taken too that you know we always need to be working on having proper, uh, bankable business risk management programs, and that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at in the January uh, Canadian Farmer Sentiment Index is asking some of those business risk management questions uh, around that. So maybe we'll be able to connect those two pieces of questions and some of the data from here and, and from that and, and come to some uh, more recommendations and conclusions. Yeah. Um, so on that note, uh, if you completed this survey and would be so inclined to take our next January Canadian Farmer Sentiment Index survey, then that's something that we would be capable of doing yeah. uh, is looking at those, those two things together. Um, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's move on here. The last, uh, area or section we're going to focus on uh, are the results of the attitude statement. So, you know, for those of you who have completed our surveys before, you know that we like to use attitude statements. And, you know, I think attitude statements are, are very easy to answer because they present you with a statement that either takes one side of, of, of an argument or another, or, you know, a, a bold side or a not bold side, and then says, to what degree do you agree with this? And from that, we can produce, I think, some some interesting results. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be showing you the the means. So uh, when you answer the question uh, related to, well, there are too many producer organizations representing farmers in Canada today. Do, do you completely agree, somewhat agree, may or may not agree, somewhat disagree, or completely disagree? Each one of those is assigned a weighting. And so then we can look at the, the mean response. So there were a number of these statements that we presented you with. Uh, the first one there I just read to you. The second, uh, a producer organization must always represent a particular commodity, region, or interest instead of to taking positions that represent a broader collection of farmers. Boy, that's a mouthful when I actually read it out loud. <laughs> um, it's, it's important that a producer organization represents farmers within specific commodities rather than having general farm organizations or commodity value chain organizations. So again, you see these are like taking a rather firm stance on something. Yeah. Uh, I feel producer organizations should work uh, harder to bring different farmers of different commodities together. Uh, farmers should work across commodities and regions more often than they do today. Farmers should have more direct involvement in policy development uh, membership in producer organizations should be mandatory through a non-refundable membership fee or checkoff. And finally, if possible, I would ask for and accept a refund from checkoffs. So those are the statements. Now, what I'm going to do without reading those back, uh, you know, one by one, you can see that there are going to be higher levels of agreement to some of these than others. What's interesting in, in this is just in eyeballing it, oftentimes we have, um, I would say, less discrepancy in the variation of responses than what we have here. There are some things that you really strongly agree with, and there are other things that you are less inclined to degree, agree with. And so it's interesting what some of those things are. So Sean, I'm gonna turn it over to you. 
you know, as you reflected on these ahead of time, did some of these stand out to you more than others? Well, let's look at the lowest number first. If possible, I would ask for and accept a refund from checkoffs. Um, it's the lowest people ranked, which I think, you know, what that number, how that number of 2.88, how that correlates or connects to 20% of people saying they have asked for a checkoff prior uh, at some point in, in history, I, I'm not totally sure, but, you know, I, I, I think it should give farm groups, I guess, some solace or comfort that that's not the highest rating because it is something that's in the back of their mind. You know, are we doing things properly so that we are not, uh, you know, creating this idea that, you know, hey, we're not, we're not representing farmers and people are gonna ask for their checkoffs and that impacts our budget. So I, I kind of saw this and I looked sort of positively. I didn't, you know, I didn't pull out a calculus uh, equation to sort out all those connections and stuff like that. But I, I think that is a positive. Um, when we look at the highest farmers should have more direct involvement in policy development. Um, you know, that's again, pe people, I think that sort of connects to people saying, Hey, um, I want to be able to provide my opinion and feedback. Uh, I think, you know, that was one of the highest things that was, um, you know, from an important standpoint and it shows through here, here as well. Now there are ways for you to have direct involvement. That's be at regional meetings show up at AGMs, run for the board. There's ways to be involved. Um, you can complain from the cheap seats, like the two guys on the Muppets, or you can, you know, put some of your time in and and do get involved. There, there are ways to be directly involved in policy development. You just got to, you got to step up. Uh, there was another one here. Oh, the first one. There are too many producer organizations representing farmers in Canada today. This one is fascinating because this is where I think some of the pressure points are. This is one we've talked a lot about on Real Ag Radio going back actually lately to last Friday where we had Tyler McCann from Cappy on. And we we discussed this very, very much in because we had we had an amalgamation this week, Sass Canola, Sass Flax, or sorry, last week. Uh, recently, winter wheat folded in or came into uh, Sask wheat. We've obviously got the Manitoba Crop Alliance. Alberta Grains is an amalgamation. Of course, going back over 12 years, we got the GFO. The Grain Farmers of Ontario is a large amalgamation. How this 3.45 out of five uh, is supportive of more of those amalgamations to to continue. And what that looks like and how fast that happens is really going to be driven by by uh by farmers themselves um that are you know that are that are voting members for for sure um the other one was uh and tied to that was farmers should work across commodities and regions more often than they do today you know i, I think there's a pretty clear message at 4.06 out of five that farmers want to see more collaboration amongst farm groups um sometimes that collaboration does lead to uh, consolidation, but I think, you know, if, if these are farmer dollars, so whether it's membership or it's a checkoff, there are farmers dollars and farmers want those dollars used as efficiently as possible, whether that's on research or, uh, from a collaboration standpoint, or that is advocacy, uh, as, as well. Um, and then the other one, um, uh, was cross border. Uh, well, that was, that was the 3.13, 3.13 out of five. Um, that, uh, a lot of times the collaboration happens inside provinces. And, you know, I think from some of these results, we can like that, that second one there, I think we can sort of say that, you know, farmers are good with like these groups with common commodities working cross province uh mm -hmm. as as yeah. well for 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 the for the common good so uh in you know we have team alberta from an advocacy standpoint where all those you know all the checkoff organizations are working together uh some other provinces have something similar to that um so those are kind of the things that 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 that, that stick out to me do, do you think i do you think i covered it i think you did you know i think there's themes here and i think that you know l looking at when we prepare this final report i think we could probably organize these in more common themes, you know, like ones around 
cooperation, one's around uh, involvement, one's around, uh, you know, number of organizations or the scope of those organizations. So, yeah, you know, th these were presented as you see them here. Um, and, uh, you know, it it'll also be interesting when we dig into the data. For, for example, the last two points, membership in organizations should be mandatory. You know, how does somebody answer that question relative to, if possible, I would ask for a yeah. refund from a checkoff. I mean, I, I would imagine we might see some some difference. So, you know, when we do this high level analysis, Sean, you know, we 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 prepare it and we put it together and we want to get back to our respondents quickly. So, you know, they, they can see we haven't forgotten about it because uh, we're very appreciative of the fact people have shared their their uh, perspectives with us. But, you know, every time we, even just you and I talk about these things, we see, wow, if we could just dig into this a little bit further and identify where, you know, where are some of those relationships between question and answer? You know, sometimes we learn an awful lot when we go to that extra layer. So, you know, be be on the lookout as we do a little bit more of this data analysis. There could be some uh, some bits and pieces and snippets that are coming out through uh, some of the real ag channels uh, that talk about some of these specific areas in, in a little bit more depth. So, yeah, exactly. you know, right now, this is just the high level stuff. Wanted to get it out quickly. And, you know, I'm certainly uh, appreciative of everybody taking the time to do this, uh, especially considering that we did it within uh, right right before the holidays, which is never really a good time to do something like this. But we had great engagement, which means it's a topic that's important to people. Absolutely. Well, it is important. And 715 people stepped up in a very quick manner. So really, really do appreciate it. And this is this is important because uh, this, uh, you know, there are producer organizations that are doing their own surveys. But I, you know, I think this is, uh, in, in some ways, uh, very, very effective what we're doing here, because it allows us to cross some of those boundaries. We will be able to do comparisons from province to province and commodity to commodity and, and dig into some of those things, voluntary versus non-voluntary uh, uh, kind of organizations. And, and so the whole premise here of Real Agri Studies is to be the farmer's voice. And so we really appreciate everybody stepping up and participating in this very, very important topic.